In the previous video in this series, we discussed the uh, HSL panel for uh, editing colors in your photo uh, and the importance of using color to, to uh, direct attention, to uh, impact the mood and emotion, as well as to add your own uh, style to photos. Um, and, and the HSL panel gives you lots of control over how you do that very specific and uh, lots of different ways and options to change things. Uh, we're going to move ahead and uh, do another layer of color changing in, in our photos. And that panel is called split toning. <clears throat> Those set of controls are called split toning. That's the next set of controls, uh, the panel below HSL slash color. So go ahead and let's open that up. And split toning refers to uh, a process, an old printing term, where you would uh, create a process where you would add um, a color overlay to the bright parts of an image and then a separate or maybe similar color overlay to the dark parts of the image. So you would split the tones and add colors to uh, different parts of the photos depending on, again, moods or tones. Uh, in the not too distant past, it was a, a way you could add colors to a, a black and white photo that wasn't originally black and white. Uh, you would add just basically one color, so maybe it would be, have some a blue tint to it or an orange or a red or something like that. Again, color has uh, an emotional content to it. So... Um, um, we can, uh, when we go to warmer colors, we get one kind of feeling and emotion. Cooler colors uh, does something else. Another thing that happens that we can do with split toning is, is connect to um, uh, styles in a way. And by that I mean uh, there's color palettes and that go with certain uh, decades, certain feelings, certain uh, um, things we associate with certain times and events or feelings we can do that with color, uh, and split toning is a relatively easy way to do that. Um, uh, for example, on this first photo we're going to use, uh, I want it to feel warmer and welcoming. We're going to do a sequence of four photos from this uh, one wedding from a few years ago, um, and uh, look at how we can use color to change the mood or uh, maybe add a style to a photo. And split toning is one of the uh, ways that uh, if you've used a, a photo app that does a one click, one tap, uh, change your photo to a look, uh, oftentimes they're using split toning or, or a slight variation thereof. So we're going to go after the same thing. We're going to go after different vibes, different feelings, different styles. So the way split toning works is uh, it has two sections to it. Uh, the highlights, which are the brighter parts of the photos, and the shadows, which are the darker parts of the photos. And each control, each uh, segment, has two controls. It has a saturation and a hue. The saturation, I, I call it the volume control for, uh, for split toning, uh, because that controls how intense the color gets added. So when my saturation's at zero, it's not adding any color in either the shadows or the highlights. So first, my first step is to turn the volume up. So I'm going to start with highlights because it's at the top. And I'll turn my volume up somewhere between 30 and 40 just to get me started. Uh, you can see in this case it's adding a, a kind of a rosy pink color on top of the bright parts of the photo. So uh, the wood frame, this wall especially, is getting a lot of that color. So the hue, if I click and hold and drag this around, you'll see the colors move from pink to yellow, through greens, and aquas, blue-greens, and then into the blues, and through blues, and into purples, and then through uh, towards the reds, and back towards pink. So again, this color is overlaying. It's sitting on top of the existing color. So when it's this blue color here at a hue of 224, uh, the wall isn't blue, uh, it's, it's blue added to that yellow color that was already there. If I turn the, the saturation up more, you'll get more of that color, but it's still not just uh, strictly blue. It's interacting with the colors underneath. Um, uh, again, to reset this, we can just go back to zero, or I'm going to leave it here. So here's what I'm thinking with this photo. I want this to feel warmer, 
by def this the the photo without the split toning added is a little cold because it was midday afternoon sun so we've got some warmth here but there's there's still a little coolness to the photo so i want it to feel warm and welcoming like the sign is so i'm gonna turn the volume up again on saturation to get started about 30 uh warmer colors so i'm going to be down here in the in the low um in the low 50s to 60s uh, 56 or something, 57. I'm just watching the photo. Uh, I'm not paying really attention to the number. I'm just looking at this to get it warmer, more golden. That's a good color for welcoming. Uh, my saturation, I'll just turn it up and down, varying about how much of that color I want added, how rich I want it to be. And I, I generally find for most of my work, it's somewhere between 20 and 40 for saturation. Much more than that, as you can see, uh, it starts getting just too intense. Uh, it starts to feel fake. Uh, and that's not something uh, I prefer in my photos. So right around 40 uh, for the saturation. Down in shadow. So this is going to be a color that interacts with the darker parts of the photo. So the chalkboard, uh, the floor here, any of this, this darker stuff. So um, I'm going to turn the volume up with saturation again to get us started, somewhere between 30 and 40. And this a hue of zero is a pink color, uh, which I, I don't mind in this photo, but it's, it's not quite where I want to be. Uh, it's pretty close. Uh, so I'm going to go drag my slider, and you'll see now the shadows are getting uh, different colors added to them. Um, so this green and blue is not really what I want. That's it's kind of puts you off. It's not very welcoming. It says go away. <laughs> so we'll keep going. Um, and somewhere right around in here, uh, the low 300s, uh, actually, excuse me, the mid, mid 300s or so, somewhere that's pretty close to that pink, um, somewhere I'm about 340. And I'm going to turn this, the, that's a little too much of the color. Uh, I'm going to pull it back a little bit on the saturation and... There we go. So somewhere in about 22 on the saturation here with a hue of 340 up on the highlights, uh, saturation of about 40 with a hue of 57. So we've warmed this photo up. We've made it feel more welcoming, more come on in, um, which is the intent. If I turn that off with this toggle here in the top left corner, so you can just turn off the split toning, we can see what it looked like before. So it's not a huge change, but this is cooler. It doesn't feel as welcoming. This also has the advantage, uh, this other color, the palette I chose here, uh, feels a little bit like a rustic photo. It feels a little bit, again, from a memory bank. Uh, this feels like the 1970s to me. So uh, I kind of like those colors uh, with this, and um, there we go. So for this um, use here, and most of the other uses I'll use split toning for, is is a bit of uh, an emotional nudge into a direction. Either hope you associate it with a feeling, uh, uh, maybe or a, uh, a time period, and um, create just a, a connection, a deeper connection to the photo. So that's the first photo with uh, split toning, and we'll move on to the next one in just a second. So the next photo I would like to do some split toning on is this photo of the bride with the, the groomsman and, and the dog, which is one of the ring bearers. Uh, it was quite a fun wedding. Um, so the guys are, are dressed very simply, suspenders, white shirt. Uh, so it's kind of an old-fashioned feel. There's in, in front of this rustic building. So uh, again, I want to I wanna use the colors in split toning to, to impart a mood that feels maybe a little old-fashioned, a little... Um, less uh, cold. This is kind of cold right now. Again, it was a cloudy, uh, a little bit of cloudy in the afternoon or even mid-afternoon sun has a lot of blue in it. So I want to warm this up to match their smiles and, and the feeling of the day. So again, we'll start with highlights, turn it up as I always do to about 30 to get started. We're adding a pink here. It's not quite where I want to be. I don't want pink in my highlights. Um, then they look like they've been in the sun too long or something. So uh, I'm going to take my hue and I'll go to the warmer tones, uh, somewhere in the low 50s probably. I want to stay away from the greens because I don't want that. Uh, right around, well, let's just go right around 50. And then I'm going to turn the volume up on that a little bit just to get uh, some more of that. Uh, you can see it gets pretty loud pretty quick. So we'll keep it somewhere right around 50 or so. I do, I like this a lot better already. It's just warmer. Um, and it's got this, um, 
again, happier feeling to it. Uh, we'll take the saturation slider on the shadows, turn that up. And again, I want it to feel, uh, that's pretty close to the color I want. I kind of like that look. The It feels like a photo that's maybe been sitting in a, in a photo album since the 70s or something. Uh, it's got a little bit of a classic old-timey feel to it. Uh, so the shadows there are, the hue is zero. Let's just turn that up just a little bit to maybe 10 or 13. So it's just nudging a little towards the yellows, uh, but still got a lot of red in it. Turn the volume down here with the saturation on the shadows just a little bit. I don't want it to feel too filtery, too much like, oh yeah, that was just one thing done in uh, in uh, in a filter. So quickly before and after, here's where we started with this photo. Uh, bride and the, and the groomsmen. So it's it's cold. It feels very uh, very cool. And, and the gray pants do that. Uh, and that's okay. We'll warm it up a little bit here with split toning. Turn that back on. We've added some uh, gold and oranges to uh, to the highlights and some and some pinky dusty rose kind of colors tones to the shadows. Uh, and it just really warms it up. It gives it just a really neat feeling, I think. So it, it's a little special effect, but um, in a way, uh, but I, I really like the mood of it. Uh, and I'd be happy to go with this photo as is now. Um, feels very much like I remember the day being. So that's kind of one of the fun things you can do with split toning. Uh, another one from this wedding. Um, actually two more. Uh, we're going to do similar stuff here. Uh, the next photo is is a group photo of the whole wedding party uh, standing in this dirt parking lot where we had uh, this guy drive his truck up and down the lot to make all this dust in the air. Uh, so we grabbed a, a quick photo with the, the, the sun behind making all this dust in the air. So let's quickly go to saturation, turn that up on the highlights, and uh, let's see what we get. We're going to get some uh, pinks and such there. Um, I, I do kind of want to go back. I, I kind of lean into this uh, warm tones, these these more golden tones in the highlights. Uh, and I really like what it's doing with um, back here, the uh, the rays of light coming in. It's really making those pop and be super dramatic. Uh, sorry, I clicked there. Let's unclick that. Uh, shadows, uh, let's turn that up real quick. Uh, to about 30 or 40. Uh, that's too much, uh, but it's kind of in the direction I want to go uh, to add some of that intensity of the of the of the reds. Um, so I'm going to turn that back down a little bit. Um, so now it's just a, a little bit of an extra kick in the, in the darker colors to add some of that warmth back there as well. Um, so it's not a dr very dramatic change to the photo. Um, actually, let's turn the Saturation up just a little bit more on the highlights. Let's see what we get there. Wow, there we go. A little much, but so let's back it off just a little bit. Yeah, sometimes I go back and forth and change my mind. It depends on my mood. And and that's one of the fun things about HSL. Uh, it, you know, if you're, depending on the mood you're in or the feeling you had when you took the photo, you can get close to matching it with HSL. So that's a, a fun thing to do. All right, we've got uh, one more photo from this wedding. Uh, still with the, the dust in the air a little bit, uh, but the sun coming through the trees um, with this photo of the big dip and the kiss. Um, again, I want to, you know, it's a very dramatic moment, uh, very um, romantic and, and uh, adventurous. Uh, so I want to make the light kind of feel cinematic and like it's a movie poster or, or even a book cover or something, you know, just um, something you don't see every day. So I'll push it a little harder than I usually do here. So again, uh, highlights, turn that up to about, I'm going to go up to 40 to just to get started. Now, I don't want the, the pinks here. Uh, I might play around with those in the shadows a little bit, but I, again, I'm going to, the light is already golden. So I want to play, you know, just add a little bit of to that. Um, so I'm going to stay about f low 50s for that color to keep it good in orange and gold. And uh, turn up the saturation just a little bit to just really, it's a little exaggerated, but I'm okay with that. I mean, the light is already blown out here. It's an exaggerated moment. Uh, so it's kind of fun. Match match it with your, uh, match the mood and tone of your photo with, with the colors going on. So now I'm taking saturation on shadows. Uh, I'm going to turn that up to about 30 as well, being very, very dramatic. Actually, we're up at 40. Um, <clears throat> 
what color do I want here? So um, let's see what we're going to do. And, and I'll show you real quick what happens when you get, when you if you put some blues in here, uh, that kind of offsets some of the what we did in the in the in the in the highlights. Um, not quite the look I want. It's kind of a neat look, but not what I I want here. I'm probably going to go with the reds and such. Uh, just be <laughs> very dramatic, uh, overdone a little bit. Uh, sometimes that's okay. Sometimes I like that. Again, this is a super dramatic moment. Um, you know, it, they were posing. So let's go ahead and have the, the photo be dramatic, the treatment be dramatic to, to match what they're doing. Uh, so here's again where we started on this photo, uh, the before by turning off the, the, the toggle to, to hide the split toning effects. Uh, so that's before. It's it's pretty neat. I mean, that's not a bad photo. It doesn't look half bad as is. Turn those effects back on this these set of tones, and all of a sudden we we really change it. Uh, very dramatic, um, glowy kind of uh, reds and orange added to the photo. Uh, so it's something different. Something different. Pretty dramatic. And then uh, one more photo to just discuss a little bit here how I use uh, split toning for uh, just a little bit of, I guess, my style. Um, I like using just a little bit of split toning to, to make my photos have just a little bit different color uh, feeling to them than it, than it was straight out of camera or how most people would edit straight out of Lightroom. So here's what I mean by that. Here's my standard go-to uh, move for um, split toning just about every photo. So I, I'll take the saturation on the highlights to about 20 and the color I choose is usually in in the low 60s, sometimes even just 60. So it's a it's a little it's it's mostly golden but it's got just a teeny bit of green in it. Uh, so that's that you can see the sky gets a little bit of that green going on. everything get in the, the golden. Uh, and then the shadows, what I do, the uh, I know the number. It's 206. That's the blue I go to. So it's a. Um, it's sometimes hard to hit these, so you can just click on it, highlight it, and just type a number in. Um, and then, again, the saturation to turn this on, right around 20 to or maybe 20 at the most. Uh, we're going to add a lot of color here to the darker colors, uh, which in this case is mostly the sky, a little bit in the building as well. Um, so this is kind of my go-to look, uh, and then I'll change the saturation amount depending on uh, the image. Uh, for portraits and such, I won't turn the saturation up very much. I'll just have it maybe like somewhere between five and ten. So it still gives just a little bit of a nudge of that look, uh, but it doesn't uh, do a very drastic change. Uh, so that's that's what I do. It's pretty subtle. I'm gonna turn it off. Wait for it to come back. To there we go. So if you look at the sky, especially the sky has uh, some reds and I mean not reds. It has a little bit of purple and pink in it. Uh, somewhat that's a function of my camera uh, and Lightroom's interpretation of the raw files from that camera. But it's also um, just how this. I mean the sky has a lot of, of believe it or not purple and pink in it. So I, I prefer my blues to be more greeny blues, aqua blue. So. This kind of accomplishes that too, in addition to anything else I might do, as we discussed previously in the HSL panel. And you can see I've moved my blues and aquas a little more towards uh, towards the green side. So there you go. So that that's a this is a look I apply to just about all my photos, uh, in varying degrees of saturation to uh, depending on the photo I'm using. But I, I like that look. Uh, just like I, I, you know, I tend to wear the same clothes, have the same haircut. This is this is me. This is Michael. This is my little bit of just something, something to add to my photos to finish them and make them just feel like mine. Uh, and when you look at a collection of my photos, uh, especially anything done within the past two years, uh, you'll if you pay attention to this, you'll see that they have this this look to them. So that's something I've decided to do because uh, I like how it looks. So split toning is uh, another t um, color tool to use to uh, change the look of your photo, uh, either for, like I'm doing sometimes for a style thing, uh, sometimes for a mood or a memory. 
But uh, because color has such emotion uh, connected to it, it's a great way when you change this to alter your photo just a little bit to allow people to get a little more emotional connection to the photo by changing it from what was 100% accurate to an interpretation. And that's what I like using all of Lightroom for is to help me interpret the photo, to interpret the moment, to make it mine and hopefully make it more interesting to both myself and people who look at it. So that's the split toning panel. As with all things in this series, if you have questions or comments, I'd love to see them in the, in the notes below. Uh, if you do have other questions and would like to email me, please feel free to do that. Hope this has been super helpful. There's more coming up. Uh, stay tuned and until we meet again.